should be working. Hello, everyone. Nika here with your Daily Neuro Nugget. I actually asked for these for Christmas because I always wear my hair down and I play with it and it annoys you guys. So now, ow. Now I don't have an excuse. But grab the adult beverage of your choice. Mine is water because... We have some information, I think very important information to cover. This information has been covered before. It doesn't matter. We need to cover it again because some of these search warrants were speculated about in the very beginning. The things that were found at Coburg's apartment were speculated about. A lot of the times that causes stories, true stories or false stories, misinformation to spread. And then the search warrants were unsealed. And a lot of people have forgotten to go back, actually verify the legal documents that were unsealed to make sure that we have not been brainwashed by the media. And it is very easy for a story to become twisted, whether it is YouTube, any type of social media, and that includes the news. The news are often faulty, they are often wrong. And I always remind everyone, you have to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Remember, the media makes their money just like everybody else, they get clicks. So don't assume that the views that top news channels get are just for fun. No, these people are generating massive revenue. So much more than YouTubers or TikTokers because they make more money. So then they are more likely to make titles, clickbait titles, if you will, on major news channels because that gets people to watch. So we're going back. We're going to review this affidavit of the items that were seized from Koberger's place at Pullman. This is so important because I've heard so many people say, oh yeah, they found blood. They found the IDs of the victims. He is the guy. There is so much in that Pullman residence that shows BK is the guy. And I went back, I reviewed the item seized and I don't understand how people are coming to the conclusion that BK is guilty just from the item C's alone. Because again, we cannot jump to conclusions from a few items alone. So, one nitrite type black glove. It's a black glove. People use gloves. I have gloves here. Do any of you guys have gloves in your home? I do. And I have that type to wash the dishes. Mine are pink right now, but I had blue ones before I had green ones. And it could also be a glove because we know that this took place during COVID and a lot of people have gloves, have masks. In their homes. So again, it's just a glove. Then we see one Walmart receipt with one Dickies tag. And people are saying, Nika, this Dickies tag shows that BK was the one that was clad in black. Okay, this is it. But this just says one Dickies tag. Dickie sells scrubs, sells pants, sells shirts, sells several items. So very odd. 
because why would one speculate that this means BK was clad in black? You could speculate, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. It could have been an orange Dickies shirt, for all we know, right? Two Marshall receipts. Okay. It's just Marshalls. I think it would have been better if this legal document was more specific. I understand that they don't often get too specific, but dates would have been interesting to have, as well as, of course, items that were purchased, as well as the times that these items were purchased. Also, a dust container from a vacuum. Everyone has a vacuum, I'm assuming, right? Most people have vacuums. I have a vacuum. That's not odd. Eight possible hair strands. Nika, they found hair in BK's apartment. That eight possible hair strands. So the wording here is telling me it may not even be hair. That's what I'm taking away from this. Eight possible hair strands? Odd wording. A fire TV stick. Okay, he watches TV sometimes. One possible animal hair strand. Okay, one possible hair, one possible hair, one possible hair, one possible hair strand. So there is a total of eight, 10, 13 hairs. Wow, so eight possible, 12 possible human, one animal. That's it? I have a lot of hair. When I shower in the morning, I have at least 12 hair strands in the shower alone. And then I blow dry. And then if I straighten or if I curl, the average person is said to lose 100 hair strands a day or so. The fact that they only found 12 possible human hair strands is letting me know that maybe I am correct about him being OCD. Maybe the fact that he vacuumed nightly, even before the crimes were committed, is pointing to BK possibly being innocent. 12 hair strands doesn't make someone guilty. If anything, it makes them a neat freak. Or OCD. That is very few hairs in a fairly normal sized apartment. One computer tower, one collection of a dark red spot. Okay, one dark red spot. I understand that in these legal, legal documents, they have to label it as dark red spot. They will not say blood because we do not know if it's blood yet. We just are analytical and it's a dark red spot. It also says collected without testing. Why wouldn't you test? It's literally one drop of a reagent or two drops to to verify if it's blood. I don't know, maybe they wanted to send it into the lab. One dark red spot. And we have heard several times over and over again that this crime was one of the bloodiest, one of the messiest, okay? This came directly from the DA and from Moscow PD. It is my opinion that if Brian did it, there would have been way more hair strands and way more DNA, not only in his apartment, in, in Pullman, but also outside of the home, potentially more blood, more dark red spots, and in his vehicle. His vehicle was spotless. His vehicle had no signs of chemical traces showing that it had been cleaned because 
I'm going to assume that if you just committed one of the bloodiest crimes ever, you're going to leave something in your vehicle, on your clothing, on your apartment, in your storage unit. This guy, nothing. One dark red spot. That is it. There's also two cuttings from uncased pillow of reddish brown stain. Okay, a red brown stain in the pillow. What could that be? I have a lot of guy friends who get these sort of ingrown hairs. When we were in the military, these guys get their hair, you know, they're very short, very cut very short, and that often can cause ingrowns in the back, which then often leads to some sort of acne. I forget the medical term for it, but they get these bumps on the back. It's like acne, and they will stain their pillowcase. And I remember that because I remember a lot of them getting cussed out by RDCs in Navy boot camp because they were staining their pillow. Is it possible that maybe he just had a pimple or a cut or, you know, a, a nick somewhere in the back of his head? Maybe because his hair was trimmed too short. He also seems to be bad at shaving because he had that cut when he came out at court from shaving. So, Two top and bottom of mattress cover a package se separately. Multiple stains, but it doesn't say red. So, stained mattress. I feel like that's also fairly common. You're telling me that's all you found? 12 possible human hairs and one red spot. And another reddish brown spot on a pillowcase. That's it. This is supposedly one of the most atrocious crimes in all of Idaho, and that's all you have. And they want us to believe that Brian is highly intelligent, right? This is why he left minimal DNA just on one tiny button on the sheath according to PD. And you're telling me that this is the same guy that supposedly drove his own vehicle? The same man who has a background on cloud forensics drove his own vehicle and took his personal phone with him? I'm sorry, but I'm not buying it. This does not point to any criminal activity, in my opinion. This sounds like the most regular, most boring, neat freak of a guy that shops at Walmart and Marshalls. I see nothing odd about the findings. What I do see odd is that they failed to annotate other things they took from his Pullman apartment. Do you guys remember when police went in, I think it was WSU police that went into his apartment in Pullman. They're carrying bags, large, clear and black bags full of his things. There were way more items than that were seized. Where are they? Where the hell are they? This is why Ann Taylor is being so nitpicky about chain of custody. Because if you don't have proper chain of custody, we don't know who has potentially tampered with evidence. Where is everything? Where are all his things? 
even when somebody goes to jail for something minor, for example, drunk driving, I shouldn't say minor, I mean, not the Idaho four. And they take away a few items. It could be your keys, your phone. They have to keep a chain of custody of those two or three items that they may have taken from you. They do that for a reason, okay? They need to ensure not only that you get your items back at the end when you are free to go, but also to ensure that nothing that you own or that may impact the right to a fair trial has been tampered with. So that is what I want to ask. Where are the rest of the items that they seized? Why are they not listed? I have looked through every single legal document, nothing. This is all that there is from his Pullman apartment. What do you think? Would you be concerned if you were in BK shoes claiming innocence and you see the items that were seized from your apartment is not matching the list that they have. Where are my things? What did you do with them? Who has them? Who is touching them? Are they planting evidence against me? That would be my questions. I wanna know what your questions would be. So this is very odd. Some people say this doesn't matter. Again, I'm of the opinion that everything matters. This is not a small issue. This is massive. If somebody tampered with his things and did not follow proper protocol, it is extremely problematic. Because even if we were to assume that he was guilty, even if we were to assume that he did commit the Idaho Four, if Ann Taylor can prove that protocol was not followed, or that there may have been room for error or for planting of evidence affecting Brian's right to a fair trial, we could also potentially have an unaliver walking around being a free man because of that. That is why chain of custody is very important. So what do you think about this? Do you think the items that were seized from his Pullman apartment show him as being shady? I want to know in the comments. So, stay warm. Chicago is very cold right now and the weather is not good. We're supposed to get like eight inches of snow, I believe. So, Stay warm and stay safe, stay hydrated. And if you are driving, make sure to carry emergency supplies with you. I feel like a mother, but an emergency kit, like even a cheap $50 one with emergency supplies, like a, like a heated blanket, can be life-saving, especially during bad weather. So, I'm done mothering for today. So you guys have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful night. Get some rest because tomorrow we are going to cover the evidence seized in Pennsylvania. And that is chaotic as well. So we will need our brain power. You guys have a wonderful night. Take care.